Ottawa. And today is the 50th anniversary of the launch of Sputnik in 1957, ushering in what was to be the dramatic space race. October is also the 40th anniversary of the Outer Space Treaty, where nations committed to the peaceful uses of space. Uh, the Rideau Institute, along with the Secure World Foundation, is uh, pleased to present uh, Dr. Mark Garneau and Dr. Lucy Stoyak uh, for you this morning. Dr. Garneau is an astronaut and veteran of three space flights uh, aboard the shuttle, logging more than 677 hours in space. He's former president of the Canadian Space Agency and a companion to the Order of Canada, and currently he serves as the Chancellor of Carleton University. Dr. Lucy Stoyak is an expert in national and international space policy and law. She has worked with COPUIS, or the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space in New York, and has served as an advisor to the uh, Canadian Government on Space Policy. She's also a faculty member of the International Space University. First, we'll have comments from Dr. Garneau, followed by Dr. Stoyak, and then we'll be happy to have some questions. Dr. Mark Garneau. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Uh, nice to be with you here this morning uh, and to point out the rather momentous event that occurred 50 years ago today. I was talking to my mother this morning and I asked her if she remembered uh, all of the hullabaloo when, when Sputnik was first launched back in 1957 and she remembers it. It was a very dramatic moment here in Canada as it ushered in the space race. And so it's a good opportunity, I think. Uh, and by the way, je vais me répéter en français après la présentation en anglais. Uh, it's a good opportunity for us to focus in on space and to look at what Canada has done up until now and uh, what it plans to do for the future. I'm here primarily to suggest that perhaps it is time for Canada to develop a space policy. Uh, Canada has done remarkable things in space. If you look at uh, the fact that we were the third country in space uh, with the launch of Alouette back in 1962, uh, there is a string of accomplishments whereby Canada has used space, in a sense, as a policy tool to accomplish national objectives. And I would encourage the government today to continue to do that. Uh, space is becoming more and more important, and certainly if we look at the very ambitious space programs that countries such as China, India, and Brazil are developing in order to play catch-up to the United States, Russia, and, and uh, Europe, uh, that should indicate to us just how important space is. Now, for Canada, space is extremely important for a number of reasons and because it helps us to achieve a number of important national objectives. Canada is a vast country, it's resource rich, it's sparsely populated with a lot of remote communities, it's very concerned about climatic change, and it wants to exert its sovereignty, particularly in Canada's north. Space is a powerful tool to help, us, help it accomplish many of those objectives. I would also put to you that at a time when we talk about Canada's need to be innovative uh, in this very competitive world, I believe that space is a glowing example of where Canada has been a front runner in terms of innovation. We are very good at doing things in space and we've been doing them now for 45 years. And I would like to point out that I think that this is one of the best kept secrets and underexploited capabilities that this country has in terms of innovation. And I can name you a long list of great things that Canada has accomplished in space. It's important for Canada to develop a space policy, not only because it helps us to achieve certain national strategic objectives, and I believe it fosters our economy, but also become, because space is becoming an increasingly crowded arena, and I think it's important for Canada to be present there in order to have a voice. I would like to also point out that next week we celebrate the 40th anniversary of the United Nations Treaty on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space. 
Canada ratified that treaty in 1967. We believe very strongly in the peaceful uses of outer space, and I think it's time for Canada again to be a voice, uh, a public and heard voice on the internet, in the international arena, to re-emphasize how strongly we feel about the peaceful uses of outer space. So what I am saying essentially, what I'm hoping to convey to you today is that it's important for Canada to re-examine what, uh, what space means to this country in terms of its national objectives. Opportunity to um, speak to you a little bit about um, the 40th anniversary of the Outer Space Treaty. As Dr. Garneau mentioned, we will be celebrating that next week. I think it's important to realize that this treaty was drafted, yes, to ensure the peaceful uses of outer space, but also to highlight how space technology could benefit all of humanity. Canada has um, excelled in certain niche areas of space technology, like space robotics, space telecommunications. It's important to uh, remember that switching on a, a computer, watching CNN, using your cell phone, all of these uh, almost taken for granted technologies are with us thanks to space technologies and space applications. And this is something that needs to be emphasized and continued. It's also important to realize that the world has changed since 1967, when perhaps only 10 to 12 countries were actively involved in space. Now you have at least close to 50 countries who operate their own satellites, many countries who can launch satellites, so that Canadian uh, niche and competition and competitivity needs to be also highlighted. And I would like to underscore what Dr. Garneau said about the importance of having a Canadian space policy that could clearly uh, draw at the highest political level clear priorities and action areas for Canada so that space applications can continue to benefit citizens, to benefit industry, and also to be benefit uh, government.